do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Greetings, guys. It is me here with a message of the kingdom of heaven. Guys, this is meet number three. Meet number three, guys. You know, here on earth, we are so family orientated. Oh, guys. Work, ethics, family orientated. And you sit and you like, where did they get this? Oh, well, they know. I don't know. They know, you know. Uh, guys, you, uh, guys, the kingdom of heaven is so hard. Guys, the kingdom of heaven, guys, is so hard. You know, you've been listening to me for some time now. Do you seriously think I'll be good for any church? No, ju just be honest right now. In your mind, do you seriously think that I'll be good for any church? No, no. They would, they would actually carry stones and throw stones at me. Throw stones at me. In fact, that's what was happening. If eyes could kill, people would kill me, could kill me with their eyes. Guys, I'm telling you, according to people, I'll be dead by now. Because you see, guys, people want you to go to church and preach about family. Oh, the importance of family. Family, family. Yet you read this word. You come and you say, mm, what a pity. Oh, guys, what a pity. You know, we think that Jesus once came for unity. Mm, that is a pity. That is a pity. Jesus, guys, never came for unity. He came for a sword. He came to divide. Oh, <laughs> and that guy, guys, can divide. Oh, you will think that Jesus will tell you to get rid of your enemies, those who are doing bad to you. You haven't read Jesus' teachings. You haven't. Come to me. I'll teach you. Come to me, I'll teach you. That guy will tell you to pray for your enemies. Those you hate, those who are wrong to you, those who are doing bad things to you, Jesus will ask you to pray for them. But the members of your own family, the one you love, oh, guys, oh, oh, my king with your kingdom, oh, my king, guys, I've already explained to you how the kingdom came about. The guy, you know, after he fasted 21 days, he starts preaching. He says, repent. The kingdom of heaven is near, you know. And guys, you know, you won't believe that many churches don't understand the message of the kingdom. Because many times people think about Jesus. They think about riches and earthly blessings because that's what they are taught. You understand? Guys, I've said it and I, I will keep saying it again. That Adam belonged to the kingdom of heaven because he came from God through Jesus. You understand? Daddy belongs to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus belongs to the kingdom of heaven. They always have. They, they never left that kingdom. It's Adam who was created. And when he disobeyed Jesus... And listened to Satan. He was kicked out of the kingdom of heaven. That's why he was banished from the garden of Eden. You understand? There is sent, oh my Lord, sent uh, this angel with flaming fl uh, fire to get rid of him. You understand? And the garden of Eden was removed. No one knows the garden of Eden. If someone tells you that they know of it, they are lying. They are lying. <laughs> You can know that. Maybe paradise, yeah. You can know that. But uh, Garden of Eden, hell no. Ain't happening. You understand? Now he was uh, banished from there. Banished from there. You understand? He was being kicked out of the kingdom of heaven. He was no longer suitable for it because he was spiritually dead. You understand? So I was born dead. You were born dead. That's why it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, only begotten son. Jesus was the only son. I was born spiritually dead. I had the seed of Satan. I was a child of Satan. So are you. Whether you like it or not, so are you and everyone here on earth. That's why people need to get saved, no matter how good you are. 
Because you find all oh, these Miss Kudi Kudis and Mr. Kudi Kudis don't want to get saved because they're like, what's wrong if I done? I'm good. You have to get saved. You are a child of Satan. You still have the sin of Adam. You understand? So, uh, when that happened, guys, I died. I was born dead because I was still in Adam's groans. I was still in Adam's loins. You understand? And my matriarch Eve, that foolish woman. Oh, foolish woman. You know, she's the one who deceived uh, Adam. But Adam also listened. Espe guys, especially because Adam is the one who heard from either daddy or Jesus. You understand? But let's forget and forgive. Do you forgive Eve and Adam? Oh, well, it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> At the end of the day, you have to get saved and obey Jesus. So whether you forgive Adam and Eve, it, it, I mean, hello, you know what I mean? Nevertheless, uh, we, were, we, we were actually belonging to the kingdom of darkness. I was born belonging to the kingdom of darkness. So are you. So are you. You understand? Now, what Jesus is coming uh, to do here is to bring the kingdom of heaven. And he brought it. He says, repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. Gospel of Matthew 10, he says, as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. You understand? So Jesus, guys, he is coming now to a people who are born of the kingdom of darkness. To a people who are born uh, of a seed of Satan. You understand? So Jesus is coming to divide that. He doesn't care that this one is your brother or your sister, physical brother or sister. He doesn't care about that because... Jesus' family are the sheep only, not the wolves. So if your brother, your physical brother, or your physical sister, or your cousin, or your friend, whoever, your aunt, your elders, they are wolves. They don't belong to Jesus. So Jesus is coming to divide that. They've done nothing wrong to you. In fact, they are good to you. They love you so much that they want you to be a blessed story. Guys, come to my family. They love me so much. That's how much they love me. Oh, well, I love them too. I love them too. I just love my Lord more. You understand? Because there are two families, the earthly family and the heavenly family. I love the, the, the heavenly family more because it's a permanent family. It wouldn't make sense for me to stick with the, um, with the temporal family when I have a, a permanent one. Because this one is temporal. I will die. Whether I like it or not, they will die. I will die. You understand? So I have to make sure that I'm fixated. As that family, you understand? The permanent one, you understand? So for me, when I left things, I sacrificed and I started dealing with the kingdom of heaven, started to do the will of the kingdom of heaven, it wasn't a loss. It was actually a gain. Oh, guys, it wasn't a loss. I'm speaking like Paul now. It was not a loss. Everything I now consider a loss. Paul says that. He says everything I now consider a loss. You understand? Because you know what? Damn, this kingdom of heaven has come. Jesus has come with this kingdom. Oh, so I'm entering it now. Oh, so I get saved. Then I enter. Oh, but I'm still in dwelling in this place. That's why my body is here, but my mind is stuck on that other side of town. You understand? So while I belong to the kingdom of heaven, I am here doing the will of my father. But my family members don't understand, or maybe they don't want it, or maybe, or maybe they don't believe it. I don't know which, which one. I don't know. You understand? So Jesus is coming to separate that. Jesus is coming to divide that. I love them. They love me too. Believe me, guys, my family members, my cousins, my brothers, my sisters, my aunts, they love me. I love them too. I love them too. Believe me, there is love. You can tell that there is love. But because now I have to deal with the kingdom of heaven and I have to obey my father and Jesus is coming to separate that. So I stay away from them, even though I love them. Even though I love them, ah, guys, it hurts. You know, it hurts me because if it were to me, I will force them to also enter the kingdom of heaven and obey Jesus because I love them that much. I want them to be where I am. You understand? I want them to go where I want to go. You understand? But we have to respect people's seed now. If they say, no, we are not going to, then it's their you understand? It's their prerogative. They have a right. I have to respect that. Love means you must respect. You understand? So I respect that, you know. But left to me, I wish they can also get saved and then obey Jesus and come to the kingdom of heaven. Like Paul, I think it's Romans chapter 9. He says that he wishes that the people of Israel were also chosen, you know, because he loves them. Ah, guys, when you love people, when you love, ah, guys, you don't know how much you love your people until you get away from them. Oh, guys, believe me when I tell you, 
I've distanced dis dis myself from my family members, not because I hate them, you know, but I love them. But because now I have to keep doing, dealing with the kingdom of heaven, I had to stay away because they are bad influence for me. Yes, they are good. Ah, oh, guys, guys, believe me when I tell you, my family members are good. According to the world, they're so good. So good. You know, they are the blessed story. Believe me when I tell you. They are the success story. Believe me when I tell you. They are good according to the world. But for the kingdom of heaven, they are not. Let me just be frank. They are not. You understand? So I have to make sure that I show my father that I love him more. I love that family more because it's permanent. It doesn't make sense to concentrate on the uh, temporal when there is a permanent. I mean, hello, guys. I mean, hello. Especially for someone who has proof of certain things. I mean, guys, it doesn't, you know. It's okay for someone who says, what if there is no other side? What if I know the other side? Hypothetically speaking, guys, I'm not speaking about anything here. I'm just saying, you understand? So what I'm trying to say is, just says, do not suppose that I've come to bring peace on earth. I, I came to bring a sword, you know. I've come to turn a man against his father, a, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. The enemies would be the members of his own household. You understand? He says that if you love me, if you love your father or mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. Meaning if you're going to obey them at my expense, you, you are going to lose me. You, you understand? If you love your daughter or, or, or son more than me, you're not worthy of me. You know, your son is doing wrong things that you know, yet you are harboring them. Why? You love them more than you love Jesus. You understand? He says, you're not worthy of me. You understand? So Jesus is not interested in that. What I'm trying to say, guys, is that Jesus did not come to bring peace here on earth. He brought a sword. And when that time comes, let it be. And when I realized, damn, Jesus, by me entering the kingdom and doing your will, and I can see that the rules of engagement aren't the same. I've already spoken about that, you know, in one of the apostles, uh, I mean, in one of the episodes. So uh, I'm trying to say that uh, when the time comes and it came for me, when I realized, damn, now I have to do the will of my father and concentrate on obeying him. And these commands are against what my family members are doing. Hey, damn. I'm going to be, I'm, uh, ah, Jesus, Jesus, I've got enemies now. You know, yet we love each other, but we are like enemies because our beliefs aren't the same. You know, guys, live with a person who doesn't share your belief. You will know what I'm talking about. That's why I say it's difficult for a person who is a Christian to marry a person who's not a Christian. How do you live with that person? It's okay if you, uh, got married first, then you got saved. Then it's understandable, you know. That's why Paul says, if that person who's not saved want to leave you, let them leave. Why? For peace's sake, for peace, you understand. Let them leave. But if you know about Jesus and then you marry a person who's not saved, how do you live with that person? How do you? Because two cannot work together unless they have agreed to do so. Birds of the same feathers fly together. You're choosing a person who doesn't share your belief. How do you live with that? You know what I mean? So it's the same thing. So Jesus says, whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. You understand? Meaning that uh, here on earth, you give up this life. Guys, you give up. It's unfortunate that you have to give up this life in order to enter that. That's why we give up. Guys, that's why we give up. Now, do you understand? We are not fools. You think that we are fools. We are not fools. Paul was in a fool. Peter was, you know, Paul, guys, was an educated man. So, I don't know whether he was a lawyer. So, the people will be like, Paul, you are so educated. Are you a fool now? You are the one preaching this now. Are you a fool now? You know, Paul is like, no, I'm not a fool. Why? Paul, guys, was taken to dead heaven. And he, and he was like, why should I run after death? Uh, mention why should I run for that upmarket house? Why should I run for this fleshy car? Why should I run for business? This business that I've seen my inheritance now, I've been taken to that heaven and I've seen Jerusalem, I've seen new paradise. Why should you understand? So it's things like that. So we give up. It's unfortunate that you find pastors and people in churches running after these things, they are actually running this race, they are running after careers, running after money, running after businesses. Oh, guys, you see it and you're like, 
Oh, what a pity. What a pity. You understand? You give up this life. Yes, you will look like a fool. Jesus looked like a fool. Jesus looked like a, a nobody, a known entity. They said he can't come from God if he's giving up these things because God is not giving them. They didn't understand that Satan stole these things in the beginning. Oh, guys, that's why I explained. Guys, you now understand. This is myth number three. Until next.